All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how to generate $500,000 a year with referrals. Now, this is not theory. This is not something that you're gonna read in a textbook. It's something that I do each and every single year. I have made millions of dollars with referrals, and I'm gonna teach you actually a specific, detailed way to do this. So you're going to love today's show. But before I hop in today's episode, if you have not been to our website, head on over to Next Level Wholesaling. And if you've not been to Next Level Wholesaling, I got an assessment there for you. And it's going to help you rate yourself in the four core areas of your wholesaling business. That is marketing, acquisition, disposition, and accounting, right? How much money you're making, your profit maximizer. And uh, if if what, what I love about this is that it's actually gonna spit out a score in those four areas and you're gonna see exactly where you need to prove if you're feeling stuck and if you're like, man, I just feel like I'm on a treadmill and I wanna get to that next level. I wanna create a business that works for me. Uh, even when I sleep, then go to nextlevelwholesaling.com and take that free assessment. I take it every quarter. This reminds me where I need to improve, and uh, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. So go ahead to nextlevelwholesaling.com. All right, so let's talk about how to make $500,000 a year, half a million dollars a year with referrals. Now, let me tell you a little story. This goes back to, I don't know, 2010, and uh, basically, I did not have a very, very deep referral network, and I decided to actually be intentional about this. So I uh, called up a local escrow company of mine here in uh, San Diego, and I called them up and I said, hey, you know, is it okay if I come in and bring lunch for you and your team, right? You and your escrow or title officers. By the way, if you are not in California, uh, escrow usually is synonymous with, you know, your title company, your closing company. Uh, or your lawyer's company that basically closes your transaction, the people who handle the paperwork and the recording of documents in the public records, okay? This is not that important. It's just that fact that these are the people who control the transactions. And so I had a mentor tell me to do this because he said, hey, you know what? If any deals fall out of escrow, deals fall apart, escrow is the first person to know about it. So I said, can I bring lunch in for you and your team? Which by the way, not a lot of people do that. Most escrow companies are usually whining and dining everybody else, not the other way around. And the funny thing is, you know, back in 2010, I was having a pretty rough year. Uh, you know, I, my, my income thermostat was low and uh, I was not really hustling like I should. And it was kind of a, a I was uncomfortable spending money at the time. And so long story short, I brought in a very, very, very fancy lunch into my escrow company. It was from Subway. <laughs> and I don't know, I brought in 40 sandwiches and that was like 40 foot longs and I had them cut them in half. And so long story short, I don't know, I spent 60, 70, 80 bucks on sandwiches and um, you know, fed, I don't know, 20 people. And I sat down and I just explained what I did and how, uh, how I was looking to buy property. And so if that, that there was a deal at this escrow company and it was falling out of escrow. We could come in, make an offer, try to save the deal, right? And keep the file at that company without them losing the revenue. Now, there are a few real estate agents they're asking questions about how I could close deals for cash and make that happen. Well, long story short, there was a, a, a an agent in the crowd and I said, hey, if you've got a deal falling out of escrow, do me a favor, call me, I'll make an offer and I would save your deal. And so Victoria came in, she was very enthusiastic and she goes, I've got a deal for you. She goes, this place is worth about $400,000 there's uh, some issues with it, but you can buy it for $180,000. Yes, that's a big spread. My jaw almost dropped. I couldn't drive over there fast enough to check it out. And I was like, yes, I can, I can get over these issues. And long story short, locked it up on a contract. I closed on it. I got private investors to actually come up with the money. I didn't have any cent of my money into the property. Long story short, uh, I bought that property for $185,000 and a few short later for a few short years later I sold that property for around $675,000. Now that is an extreme example but those kind of deals happen every single day. Here's the beauty of this is through that one relationship I probably have made 
over two to three million dollars with Victoria. Okay. Um, it never would have happened if I wasn't intentional about bringing lunch into that escrow company, getting out of my comfort zone and telling people what I do. And that brings me to my first point. Okay. And that is do not be a secret. <laughs> I know of so many real estate uh, investors who are playing a game called undercover real estate investor. And for whatever reason, maybe out of insecurity or imposter syndrome, or because they've been involved in a bunch of business ventures in the past, and they don't want their family and friends laughing them, you know, out of the next holiday dinner, they don't tell everyone we're up, uh, they're, they're up to. And I could tell you this is the biggest mistake. By the way, some of you listening to this may have earned the right to be laughed at with some of your inconsistency, right? But don't worry, right? You can get past that. We can grow. We can change that. And today is a new day where you can become a consistency machine, where you become a woman or a man of their word and stick to something until you succeed. All right. So long story short, I had a lunch, Victoria's made me millions of dollars over the years, and I can tell you I've developed many, many, many relationships like that. Not only for deals, right, but I've done deals where I've met an inspector and one of these things, and they've been my inspector for years. I've had real estate agents uh, partner with me on dispositions because of this. Uh, I've had other agents bring me deals, and I'm telling you, this is year after year after year. I've had other wholesalers who come to me and bring me deals also. And so that is why this is so, so, so important. Okay. So who are we looking for? Well, I recommended, uh, obviously I talked a little bit about that experience I had at the beginning of the episodes, but number one is that you need to network with real estate agents. Now I can tell you real estate agents are typically the gatekeeper to 90% of real estate transactions. And so you need to network with real estate agents. They have built the sphere of influence with sellers. And so if you can tap into them, that's when you could get a smoking hot deal. So where would I connect with real estate agents? Well, number one is I would check out my local Facebook groups, right? So uh, I would type in, I don't know, Nashville real estate or Dallas real estate or you know Minneapolis real estate. And so if you do that, you're going to network with that. Now I'm going to look for real active groups, stuff where there's a lot of comments on the post. They call that engagement, right? Stuff where there's a lot of likes. And so you see a lot of people. So I'm going to start there. The second thing is I'm going to look for real estate investor groups where there are real estate agents. Okay. And then the third is that I'm going to look for um, uh, referrals from my title company right? And I'll say, who do you know? And so those are the three, and I'm going to be intentional. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build a database of people. Very, very important. Tell them what you do. And I would recommend taking people out to lunch, right? Get to know them. But most importantly, you want to keep their phone number and you want to keep their email address. I'm going to get to that here in a little bit, but you want to tell them what you do, right? You don't want to be a secret. I'm a real estate investor. I buy properties. I hope to make a return. I got to buy at a price of which to make a profit. By the way, I have no problem with you representing me, right? Uh, and so that means that you could double end the deal. Double ending means that they earn twice the commission. That's basically what that means. Easy. Okay. So you cannot be a secret. So let's get some, let, let's get to the brass tacks. What does that mean? Well, if I was really trying to build up my referral network, I would commit to make a certain amount of posts in a Facebook group uh, a week, right? Uh, a contact, right? And I'd tell people to DM me. I'd commit to do a certain amount of lunches, right? Maybe one-on-one -on -one or a group seminar. By the way, I love doing group stuff, right? I might commit to do a webinar or a live Google chat in a Facebook group, right? But I would commit to make that happen. Put it on the calendar. Give it an actionable item, okay? The next thing that I'm going to talk about is your friends and family, now, some of you might have great reputations with their friends and family, and they may want to help you out. But I'm sure that you've got some negative Nancys out there that says that this is another one of your harebrained ideas and that you're not a real estate investor or that, you know, you've been to the next seminar or whatever that is. And, you know, maybe some of you have jumped around from business to business and you've lost some credibility. Well, here's a time to change that. So the one thing that I would do is I would make sure my social media pages reflect what I do. I would make sure that, you know, my website reflects what I do. I would make sure that my talk and my communication reflects what I do. And this is a big thing right here. Uh, by the way, I would set up a Google 
uh, business profile, right? And that that's a, you get upset up with Google. And so get really, really serious about building not only your online reputation, but your reputation with your friends and family. Now, there are some people who are gonna be negative Nancy's no matter what, that's okay. But you wanna earn that respect. You wanna be consistent. Now, if you are involved in like two or three or four different business ventures, right? You're involved in like some crypto thing and, you know, some multi-level marketing thing, uh, you know, and you have a, a contracting business and you're all over the place, man, I would really, really, really eliminate all that. Anything that's not performing, get rid of it. Not only is it going to take your focus, but you, you, your, your, your friends and your family are not going to take you seriously. You've got to be focused. They got to see that you're serious about this. Very, very important. Okay. Now here's the next, the, here's the shortcut to gain credibility. If you don't feel like you've got a lot of credibility with your friends or, or, you know, a circle of influence, well, let's go ahead and borrow someone's influence. So I would find a local influencer. Okay, a local influencer, someone who's got weight in your community, someone who people look up to. Maybe they have a Facebook page. Maybe they have a uh, a buy sell group locally. Right, it doesn't need to be like uh, Michael Jordan. Right, <laughs> it could be Mary Jo who owns the local buy sell group, but everybody knows her. Right. Um, you know, it could be uh, you know a. Uh, a local political figure that was once running in politics, but is out of politics now, right? But they have a following, could be an email list, it could be a Facebook page, could be a YouTube channel, could be a podcast, but it's local, 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 local. I can't, I can't get over that enough, right? This person, you could uh, join forces with them to do deals, right? So they could bring you on and they could tell you about their service, right? Or tell people about your service, and then you could cut in this influencer for a portion of the deals. Okay, I can tell you that this is one of our most profitable channels for 2022, and we are going to lean heavy into this in 2023. Pretty excited about that, but don't worry about it if you don't have credibility. Borrow that credibility from a local influencer. So how do I do that? Well, uh, one thing is I'm, if you go on Facebook, you can actually look for the largest Facebook groups in a geographical area. So just do that. Check it out. Make it happen. If you don't know how to do that, just YouTube it. Reach out to these people. You got to be willing to get rejected. All right. Uh, let's go out to my next action item is you got to get out a Christmas card or Thanksgiving card, Hanukkah card, holiday card, um, and stay in front of people. So here's a little trick is you want to send that out. And then at the end, I might leave, leave a little note and saying, hey, look, I'm looking to buy more houses in 2023. If you got any investment properties, give me a call. If you want a joint venture, give me a call and make that happen. You want to be in front of people, right? Out of sight, out of mind. So if you've got a list of a thousand people, I tell you what, spending the 500 bucks to send people a direct mail piece, handwritten on the outside with a, a stamp, tell people what you do make an impact, right? Also appear local, have a picture of your family on there. If it's just you, you're a single guy or girl, picture you and your dog. I don't care what it is, right? But make sure that you are in front of people. Next thing I'm going to talk about is content. Local content. Uh, I've got a uh, a good friend of mine who puts out an amazing email newsletter. Uh, he uh, puts out a, uh, a a great update on the market. At the end, he uh, always talks about how he buys houses. And so, my recommendation to you is start to build your influence by putting out content. Now, uh, you could partner with a great real estate broker who's going to give you content, and you can post that. And at the end, we're going to say, "Hey, we buy houses, and we're going to make this happen." So. Uh, I don't care what it is, but you have to give people value with that content. Now, if you've noticed anything is you want to build an email list. So I love to give away giveaways. So if you notice, if you listen to this podcast, uh, I'm going to give you, you know, my script that I talk to motivated sellers, right? So if you want to check that out, you can go to no limits, real estate, investing.com forward slash script, right? If you want to uh, meet with me on Facebook, you can go to wholesalingandgroup.com, right? And hey, hang out with me on Facebook in, in one of the groups that I hang out with, right? So that's another way. And now I've connected with you in that group. I also give away my calculator for Novation. So you can go to novationscalculator.com if you want to know what to pay for uh, a Novations deal. And you're like, what the heck? I have no idea. Start there. I'm going to give that to you. So novationscalculator.com. But you see what I just did there, right? Is that I am offering you value in exchange for your email address, right? It's not a commitment. Now for me, I'm going to offer value. If, if you're on my email list, I send emails out with content about twice a week. So I'm always in front of you, always building that relationship, always offering value. And so, you know, I can't force anyone to do business with me, nor do I want to force, 
people, you know, and at this point, uh, you know, in terms of a, a lot of areas of my business, there's some areas where I can't take on any more business. And that's because I've built up an email list and a reputation and goodwill with my audience. All right. Very, very, very important. So you need to build an email list of your prospects. By the way, I would check out uh, an area where you want to check out your email list. If you can go to uh, MailChimp, Dot com mailchimp.com that's a great place where you can just start to collect email address and addresses and send mass email out to your people the last thing i'm going to mention is escrow companies title companies lawyers offices man do lunches here right do, do lunches there at least every other month and i tell you what it's going to uh, pay off in spades people are going to remember you they're going to like you they're going to want to call you you're going to get contacts you're going to get knowledge you're going to get relationships and business is going to come to you. Now, you must stay in front of people. They've got short memories. You want to send out emails. You want to ask for the business. But I got to tell you what, right? Let's go back to Victoria. I told you on that one deal, do the math. I made a lot of money. I went on to make millions with Victoria every single year. All right. And I love that because that was my first first one. I've gone on to do many, 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 many deals with real estate agents, right? With people who refer to me from title companies, from other wholesalers. Because by the way, I didn't recommend uh, I mean that, but you want to network with other wholesalers who are new in the business who want to partner with you, right? Split the deal. They're going to be ecstatic, right? And you're going to offer all of this value to you. So to reiterate, right? This is not theory. This is something that I do today. I, 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 I did it, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and I still do it today. You want to network with real estate agents and brokers. You want to network with friends and family. You want to build credibility, your websites, your social media. Hey, it should bleed what you're doing. Don't have five different businesses, right? Look like you're serious about this. If you don't have your own credibility, guess what? Partner with somebody else who's got the credibility, the local influencers. I mentioned the Facebook groups. Send out a Christmas card, Hanukkah card. I don't know, you know, and any any kind of holiday card, right? And tell people what you do. Remind it, use direct mail. Uh, the next thing I would say is, hey, put out some content. Tell people what to do. Don't be a secret. Don't be an undercover investor. Collect people's email addresses, connect with them, offer value, give, 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 give. Remind them what they do, right? And then one day in return, they're going to send you a deal and it's going to be 30, 40, 50, maybe a hundred dollar deal. And you know what? That could be a multi-million dollar relationships. Escrow companies, I love to do lunches there. And lastly, network with other wholesalers. I tell you what, these people, some of them are real hustlers. They've got deals and they don't know what to do when they've got a motivated sellers. Help them close it and you will have 500K a year coming in from your sphere of influence before you know it. Talk to you soon.